All right, this is Anduin OS, something new for me. It says Anduin OS subtraction on Ubuntu instead of addition. Interesting statement. Anduin OS is a custom Debian-based Linux distribution that aims to facilitate users transitioning from Windows to Ubuntu by maintaining familiar operational habits and workflows. Um, in plain English, this is another uh, gateway to Linux from Windows, uh, something that Zorn OS has done successfully for the last, uh, well, almost 14 years now. All right, so why choose Anduin OS? Smaller image, friendly interface, unbeatable performance, safe and secure. The OS is just 1.7 gigabytes in size, similar to Ubuntu. I don't think so. Isn't Ubuntu like double the size of this? Maybe I'm wrong, but um, yeah, I don't think that's entirely accurate. Friendly inter interface, the GNOME-based desktop environment, uh, whether that's friendly or not, that's debatable. All right, privacy and ecological perfection. The Ubuntu uh, is based on Debian and uses Ubuntu's package base, and that's fine. Open source, regular updates. Okay, with Anduino, with Anduin, that sounds like a planet on Star Wars. Anyway, with Anduin OS, you can do more browsing, gaming, and so on. All right, I'm all cool with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what we have. So of course, Firefox is installed by default. So this is supposed to mimic Windows and I'm perfectly fine with that. And as you can see, it does mimic uh, the latest Windows. Let's take a look at the system monitor and see what we have here. Resources uh, with the recorder running 2.2 gigs. That's definitely less than Windows. Here I have, as you can see, a dual core machine, quite old. It still works. It is a Lenovo. And Lenovo and Linux are it's a perfect marriage, in my opinion, along with ThinkPads. All right, that looks good. All right, we have some shortcuts here at the bottom. And if you've played with uh, the GNOME desktop before, you can see that this is quite familiar. It looks like we have some extensions installed like a dash to panel and some other favorites, which I am quite happy with that. And really with the GNOME desktop, you need some about four or five extensions to make this usable for Windows users. I did install Simple Screen Recorder through the terminal because I'm so used to that, but as a Windows user, and I'm assuming with this, you will not have to just go to the App Store or Software Center and install whatever you want to there, but let's move along. All right, the File Manager. And this is moving along quite zippy from a USB stick. I have not installed this. Of course, Firefox. All right, let's go to all apps. See what we have here. See if anything catches my eye. Extensions. And let's see what's installed here. It looks like quite a bit. You can turn these on or off. The arc menu, audio switcher, blur my shell. Turn that on or off, customize, iBus and all that. And okay, dash to panel, very good. Desktop icons, very good. Network stats, don't care for that. Open weather and some others. All right, so far as a Windows user, I approve. I like it. All right, let's get and um, click this. Let's change the settings to Fahrenheit. Like looks like we have a weather extension, very good. Uh, let's see here. Temperature, we we'll go to uh, Fahrenheit. Let's try a different uh, locale, locations. Let's take away San Francisco. Let's add, um, I'm close to Pittsburgh. Let's do Pittsburgh. And see what happens here. All right, close enough. And we have the Pittsburgh weather. Wow, this is really quite fast off a USB on an outdated computer for a GNOME desktop. I'm very impressed so far. Right click on the desktop, change background. All right, not much going on here. The usual settings here to the left. And I won't go through all of this, but uh, all right, so far quite smooth. Wow. Yeah, quite smooth. All right, let's... um. Why don't we, uh, now I'm going to skip the terminal. So this is a gateway for Windows users. Let's go ahead and go to the, uh, let's say I wanted to install, let's install VLC. I know that the terminal commands work, but again, if you are a Windows user, you won't know that. All right, let's, um, 
Let's go apps. Let's see if that works. Ah, App Store. That's what I want. Let's um, go through the App Center and why did Firefox come up? Uh, I don't want to go to a website. Huh. Did I miss something? Let me let me try this again. App. Okay, such as the App Center. They call it App Store, which is fine. I don't get it. All right, let me try. Maybe I'm missing something. It's, it's certainly possible. Uh, Software Center? Right? Yeah, Software Center. Let me just type in software. It keeps going back to the App Store. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, I was ready to, to, to give this <laughs> an A+, because the speed of this really is, is quite fast for a GNOME desktop, but in order to install something, now let's say I'm, I'm completely new to Linux, okay? In order to install something, I have to go t to the App Store website to do other commands to install software? Are you kidding me? I mean, I already know how to do this. But if you're a new Windows or a new Linux user, ah, oh boy. I mean, I'm assuming that the terminal command is going to work. Well, let's let's do um, sudo apt install. Okay, you guys probably already know this VLC. Yeah, click Y. Okay, and it's going through the motions as you've seen this before if you are not new to Linux, of course. And um, I'm sure if I type in VLC, there it is. Okay, it's all good. And th th this is fine. But <laughs> I don't know what to say. I was really starting to like this, but... Um, no, this is not a gateway for Windows users, I'm sorry. You should have some kind of app center or a software center already pre-installed. I'm not saying that it's difficult to learn to install applications through the terminal, but if this is going to be potentially a replacement to Windows 10 or 11, you can't have a Linux newbie <laughs> clicking apps, expecting to go to an app center to install apps, but has to follow all of this to install something. I'm sorry, that's not going to fly. That's too bad. I was I was beginning to like this, but as a gate as something for brand new Linux users, I have to I have to give it a fail. For someone like me, it's perfectly fine. I would have no problem so far doing this as a full install it's it seems okay I, I actually quite like it but for windows users no i would stick with linux mint um zorn os has done it quite well and if you don't want to mess with installing anything at all then just get yourself a chromebook there's nothing to fuss and mess with and doing os it's kind of disappointing guys i don't know maybe i'm being too harsh what do you think? Post their, post your comments below, but uh, I have to give this one a fail, at least for new Windows users. That's it. I'll catch you on the next one. Arrivederci.